Hello, my good people. I am doing a general. Uh, we're going to go over September uh, 2023 astrological transits. This is for all signs. Okay, this may affect you directly. But uh, on September 1st, the moon enters Aries. And that's going to be more energy available to you. Where you can focus on areas maybe you've been neglecting or you've lacked the motivation to actually do anything about. Okay? Uh, September 2nd. It's still there, but it's uh, training uh, Venus and Leo. Okay? So the people in your life... Um, they may actually benefit you in some way where you can enjoy collaborating with people, so to speak, okay? So a lot of Aries, a lot of Leo in the first two days. Um, <laughs> on September 3rd, your moon enters Taurus. Or ever, well, the moon enters Taurus. Sorry, my bad. It's important to like ground yourself as energy is very wonky everywhere right now. And Taurus is Venus. So grounding yourself will kind of keep us all from getting lost in it and uh, the Venus retrograde actually comes to an end so you can start sorting through those issues that have come up in the last month and just from my personal readings it's like a lot of men went silent got very in their head um, and was trying to sort through their shadow from what I can tell because if you don't know and you're new hey I'm Brandy I am a shadow worker and, um, well, that's, that's been here. <laughs> okay. So that's going to find more inspired creativity that's been missing where your energy starts to slowly return. Right. So that's, uh, Aries Taurus. So that day may actually benefit me a lot <laughs> because I am a cusper. And then on the fourth, it could definitely, um, will benefit us cuspers as much as well because it goes into Virgo and Jupiter and Taurus. So that's focusing on the bright side to open you to new opportunities. Maybe you would have cut yourself off from, right? And then Jupiter goes retrograde that day on the 4th. So it kicks off and it's entirely in Taurus. And it's a time when you don't have as many opportunities, but you work through that karma. It's all about the karma in Taurus, where you're slow, you're stubborn, you try to be more flexible, but it just keeps on going against you. This is to get you to open up to certain things. So that may be, um, well, trying yet beneficial, okay? Um, on September 5th, uh, Moon goes to Gemini, which, well energy could be very scattered. So you just need to take breaks like they say in school. Uh, when you feel stuck, walk away for 10 minutes, do something else, come back, okay? Uh, very talkative too, rumors, the galore, who knows? And then on the sixth, you clear out the ideas, you eliminate uh, like kind of what's no longer working for you for the next week, getting more organized, you know, clean out your mind, lighten your mind, clean out your closet, you know, all those good things. And then the sun uh, goes Virgo conjunct, okay? So you will want to get something started. And anything you start on the 6th could actually be very practical and come to, like, the, the grand buildup in about six to eight weeks from there. There's a lot going on, okay? And I mean that, and that's why I'm doing this voice recording because this affects everyone. I don't care who you are or what you think. I'm not an astrologer, but I definitely do follow it because spirit directs me that way. Um, and I felt this was needed right now because there's a lot going on up until like October, November for everyone with all these retrogrades and stuff. People can't think that it doesn't affect us when the moon literally affects the ocean, folks. The, o the ocean covers the world and it's a moon, right? All right, I'm just saying. So on the 7th, the moon goes in Gemini, it squares Neptune and Pisces, which is easily drained. We're going to need to give yourself more time to rest and not take on too much. So remember that, September 7th. On the 8th, it enters Cancer. So something in your life may need attention to be strengthened, where you can make sure those issues are being tackled or fixed instead of sitting on them, crying about them. <laughs> Just be open to the possibilities that are beneficial for you so you can focus on those to get your potential and, and keep going, right? 
September 9th. For some reason, lately, um, I've been picking up September 9th a lot in my readings and just for major things. So just watch out for this day. Um, it's in Uranus and Taurus, and that's a big change. So you can work on those things to accomplish those small changes that can be done quickly, right? The small things that can be done quickly actually help and benefit you. On the 10th, the moon enters Leo. So you need to take care of your heart. Your heart will lead you to what you need to be addressed the most, where you've been thrown off lately. So you can start to fix those things, okay? September 11th, it is, you know, September 11th. So everyone's gonna kind of be in a silent moment anyways. But this is, um, the people in your life may need more attention from you because of course they're gonna be bored, all that good stuff. And, but you'll be able to help them easier. You can actually enjoy your time with people in your life on the 11th. So that's good. Everyone will be, you know, remembering. I don't know where you were, but I was literally 17 and sitting with my grandmother and it was horrifying. So, mm. on the 12th, there is going to be something upsetting that could make you want to like lash out. And that's because it's the moon is square Uranus and Leo and Taurus. And wow, it's just not going to help. So it's like, take a different perspective, take a back seat. Uh, I know this is hard to remember for all of us at those times. On the 13th of September, the moon enters Virgo directly. So it's working on your schedule, listing your things to do, maximizing the time and the energy you have, you know, cause it's not going to last long. It's just time to give you more focus for it. And that continues over until the 14th of the middle of the month. So, you know, projects, new schedules, new jobs, new routines. That goes mer Mercury direct. Um, so it's just finish fast or have stalled off for a while that you've put off. Those are the things that are going to be coming back into focus uh, on the 14th. 14th, 15th, sorry. 14th, 15th, all that. So that means you just get on track, you get organized, um, adjustments, you know, where you can start to feel more normal again with the work ethic and good luck with the new elections coming. So they're going to make sure they throw that off. But that's where you want to take these days to kind of put some balance back in your life. Um, so you can feel more emotionally secure with your areas, your schedules, stuff like that. The 16th, uh, it's in Libra. Uh, it, energy can surge, it can be temporary, so take advantage of that. The 17th, again, we got Venus and Leo square Jupiter with Taurus. Laziness could take over. That's why you want to take um, stock of what you can do on the 15th and 16th. You know what I mean? Because you're going to have a hard time probably finding motivation in all of the world. The 18th, okay, Scorpio is a main player. Passion and intensity, they return. It helps you get to the heart of the matters. It makes you take some action. So you do have like a day or two in September where there's just no motivation. Okay. And then here comes Neptune again on the 19th where there's struggle. There's no boundaries. You got to hold them like you take advantage of people do. I mean, yeah, this is a quick brush up. <laughs> the 20th, um, that's Sagittarius. Expand your life, your mind. Um, it's good for you. More wisdom, more knowledge. Share what you already know with others. You know what I mean? It's all about mm, expansion. Um, imagine getting like a, a new set of glasses, right? Seeing things, um, new interest, all that. And then Pluto, Capricorn, Virgo, 21st. Um, where can you become more comfortable in your personal power? You acknowledge the power and the influence that you have. So that's good. On the 22nd, it's a new moon, our first quarter moon in Sagittarius, sorry. And then the moon enters Capricorn. Um, adjustments from August uh, for Im important developments uh, during the week of the 22nd going forward into like the 28th, I think. You work on adjusting those in big ways. So very, very beneficial because of Capricorn. It's ambition. It's putting things to work. It's long-term plans actions with your goals and where you can improve things. Okay. And then the 23rd, it's Libra partnership, balance, fairness, important, you know, spending time with people that are important in your life, still restoring balance. September is all about restoring harmony and balance with no chaos, being decisive, getting those things out of the way. Uh, then we go entering Aquarius on the 24th. 
it's unconventional ways to deal with problems that need to be solved. Okay, keep that in mind. 25th, again, we got Virgo, Jupiter, Taurus, big ideas, more attention. You can put them together in plans that excite you, where your mind can be an advantage for you. The 26th, uh, Pisces, here we are. You know, sensitivity higher than usual, more in tune with the subtle energies all around you. I mean, there's just so much going on. Okay, every single day there's like a new energy hitting you. So again, the 27th is Pisces and Jupiter and Taurus. So uh, enticing experiences, willing to try those new things, getting more knowledge or, or uh, all of a sudden remembering knowledge that you attain that's been in the back of your mind. So those are good things too. To 28th, Moon enters Aries again. So it starts off with Aries, it ends with Aries pretty much. Um, it's just something new that you want to get started. I mean, it's a repetitive thing, right? It's all quick, 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 though, because the energy is very fleeting. It's motivated. It's chaos. It's organization. <laughs> so then you get the full moon in Aries on the 29th of September, and that can drive you using those emotions and focusing on what you've most invested in, and then short tempers, keeping yourself busy to keep yourself out of being angry, stuff like that. Because Uranus is here too, and old issues that have lasted a few months. Um, I mean, you could be walking away from a relationship. You could be taking a smarter approach, um, seeing where you've been lashing out when you really didn't need to. Yeah. Then we have a moon entering Taurus on the 30th, where you slow down, you're more present. So if you just broke up, you're going to enjoy your time. Where you feel more confident, right? So you can see things through and thank your confidence in that. And it's just, again, the plans, the unconventional ideas. Um, it, it reaches ends or it comes to a head. You know, it, is it real? Is it in theory? So, I mean, all that is great. <laughs> we are going to do a astrological card. I'm going to do three for different people out here in the vast ocean. Um... Yeah, the Divination of Oracles, Spirit Archangels, guys, anyone who's watching that feels drawn to this, listening out there. Clouds, um, Phrenology, and Dice. So that is Mystical, Certainty, and Gambling. <laughs> Alright, so first we're going to read the Clouds of the Mystical for anyone who feels drawn to it. A wonderful gateway has opened up for you and you're experiencing mystical occurrences. Do not discount these encounters as mere figments of your imagination. What you're witnessing is very real, so use your natural and psychic gifts to explore the esoteric realm. Allow the images you will see in the sky above and the loving voices you hear to gently guide you as you become a visionary. You'll experience the elation of connecting with the supernatural. Free yourself from worry. Find peace of mind through meditation and journey with your guides and angels. Release control as you float into an ultra consciousness and defy laws of the physical. So, so many people aspire to a state of nirvana. You're on your way there. So this just reminds me of someone who can uh, remote view. So if you are a remote viewer, September is really good for you. Okay. Phrenology for the second half. If your days are filled with aimless activity and your head is filled with pointless internal chatter and consistent plans, stop a while and turn down the volume. Sorry, I'm going to stop right there. This feels like this is more geared towards water signs um, where September is going to be really good for you to get the motivation to get stuff like ideas that have been in your head done. Now I'm going to continue. When you give in to rest and silence, you're more likely to hear the information your guides are trying to give you as you try to ascertain what you should or should not do. Use your head rather than accepting the first piece of advice you're given. Think logically as it's time to rely on good, old-fashioned common sense. Stability in your life is required, so make concrete plans. Seek expert advice and research carefully what you need to know to be certain about your next move. If you do so, the outcome will be successful without a doubt. Okay? Now we're going to move on to dice for the uh, other portion of the people listening. Which this feels physical. So that could definitely, uh, I feel like this one, so the first one was kind of like air and then the water signs. This one feels like it is earth and 
fire just off my, my premonition, my gut. So we're going to read it now. Should you stay or should you go? This is what you've been wondering of late. You want to throw in the towel, but if you do, you are running away from your responsibilities. Perhaps you should persevere and carry on. It might get better, but what if it doesn't? If a situation is not serving you as it should, if you are not being appreciated, then surely it's time to leave. However, as you have put in so much time and energy, it may be a mistake to leave before you reap the rewards. You can stay in the warmth of your current comfort zone or gamble it all away on a leap into the unknown which might eventually lead you to adventures that will fulfill your soul, dreams, and desires. Only you can decide whether or not to take a risk. But it is time to roll the dice. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. The middle is water. The last one is earth and fire because of all the Venus going on here. And the first one, clouds, of course, you know, but spirit's funny that way. For sure. So if you guys like this, please hit like make sure you hit subscribe sharing is caring but not necessary you can go to tori and I .com. i have michelle there she can do photo aura readings um you just got to make sure you choose the correct section uh we have ashley who is the softer side of the sponge because i'm a shadow worker she gets the details in between the bigger pictures of what i see the blocks and then you have me of course brandy so lots of things to choose from um, and if it's your birthday within the next 30 days, just reach out to me uh, on my email and I will give you a 25% off the basic general readings. I also do holistic consultations. So like I said, a plethora of stuff. Um, and I will catch you later and I very, very much appreciate you.